Hey, what's up everybody? It's that guy, Skimpy. This is not gonna be a bait making video. Man, it is uh, like 95 degrees here in Washington and I'm not gonna be getting some hot plastic or some hot lead today, man. But anyways, I've been getting a bunch of uh, requests asking what I use for chatter baits because as you know, I fish a lot of chatter baits and uh, they just wanna know what, what's my setup. So yeah, so first of all, um, the chatter baits that I use are either uh, three eighths or half ounce. Majority of the time, I'm rocking the three eighths. Now let's talk about colors. The colors of the chatter baits, and good old white chatter bait with the white um, trailer, man, it, it's awesome. I fish that the most. Um, I also fish black and blue, and I also fish natural colors, being like green pumpkin or whatever, but for the most part, most of the time, I'm going to go ahead and rock the white. And I, I'll, I'll rock it in clear water or even stained water, man. It works It works great in both. All right, so let's talk about the, uh, the setup I use. Okay, so, so this is the rod I use. It's an older uh, Lamb of Glass. It's an Excel. It's made for uh, spinnerbaits, light Texas rigs. But this is a, it's a 6.6. It's a medium with fast, fast action. And this is, a, like I said, it's an older one, but I still use it. Uh, the model number is XL664C. Okay, as far as the reel goes, Daiwa, Tatula, gotta love them, man. This is the, uh, the 6.3, and it just works perfect with it. I'm using... Um, what is it? I think it's 12 pound. It might be 15, but I believe it's 12 pound fluorocarbon. Sometimes I use the 12, sometimes I use the 15. I think what I have on there right now is the 12. And then you always have to remember to use a trigger happy comfort grip. For those who have never used a trigger happy comfort grip, you need to. Once you use it, you'll never ever fish a rod without one. So pretty much after a long day fishing your fingers get a little bit sore or whatever but having that little grip right here is perfect okay so the next question i get a lot is how do you fish a chatterbait so i fish a chatterbait a lot like i would fish a spinnerbait anywhere that i would fish a spinnerbait i'm gonna fish a chatterbait and vice versa um, some people ask is a chatterbait more or less weedless than a spinnerbait. I'm gonna say it's about the same. I guess it depends on where you're fishing it. Um, if it's if it's like the thin grass and stuff, I would I would I would fish the chatterbait rather than spinnerbait. Spinnerbait, in my opinion, um, that really thin grass gets caught in the blades when you're spinning it, and uh, the chatterbait kind of goes through it a little bit better. But if you're fishing uh, pads or whatever, you know, and there's a little bit of room. I think the spinnerbait and the chatterbait are about the same. All right, so we're gonna talk about trailers. Um, this right here, I just have a twin tail grub. So I either fish a twin tail grub or like a swim bait, like a 3.5 or four inch swim bait. And I usually match whatever color the skirt is. So if I'm fishing a white, Chatterbait, I'm gonna do a white trailer. If I'm fishing a green pumpkin, chatterbait, I'm gonna probably put a green pumpkin. Okay, so the next question I get is when to throw a chatterbait. Should I throw it in the morning? Should I throw it in the afternoon? Should I throw it at nighttime? Whatever. Um, I throw a chatterbait all day long. Um, if it's catching fish, it's catching fish. If it's not catching fish, it's not catching fish. Um, so I always have a chatterbait tied on, especially during tournaments. Our tournaments are usually like, you know, five to two, you know, 5 a.m. to two in the afternoon. And uh, like I said, I will catch fish on a chatterbait throughout the tournament. It all depends on, you know, the structure or whatever. And that comes to my next, uh, my next deal here, where to throw the chatterbait. So the m majority of the time I'm throwing chatterbait is next to structure and when i mean structure i mean it can be a dock so i'm gonna cast it right next to a dock and try to get it as close as i can to a dock uh, 
another area, let's say I have stumps or something, then I'm gonna try to get it as close as I can to the stump and just, just kind of swing it by right by the stump. Another thing that I like to do is especially on like stumps or timber or anything, I'll, uh, I'll have the, the chatterbait and I'll swim it and it'll get right next to the stump and I just let it drop, just completely drop and then I start reeling it again. And I'll tell you what, there's been so many times that I get hit on the drop. So they might be chasing it as it's swimming, but as soon as I drop it, or excuse me, as soon as I stop it and it starts dropping, then bam, that's right when they hit it. Um, another area that I fish it is uh, in, in lily pads. I fish this, if I can get around the lily pads, if the lily pads aren't super thick and I can get uh, my chatterbait through, through the lily pads, I've had awesome success with with swimming this uh, chatterbait throughout the lily pads. Uh, another thing is, and you could ask my tournament partner Ed, and this is how we took, I think it was second place at this one tournament, and uh, it was off this trick. Uh, so there was a lot of pads, and it was a little bit thicker than I than I liked, but you know, time was running down, and I knew the chatterbait was getting bites. So I started casting into the lilies, and and when I was uh, Kind of swimming it i was kind of swimming it fast and i would get it like right on top of the lily and then let it let it kind of go down and then just swimming it on the lily almost like you would swim a top water frog honestly and uh i was getting so many bites and explosions uh fishing this like it was a top water bait it was awesome you know i would i would get it right on top of a pad and i'd wait you know like five seconds or so and then i would take it off and as soon as it would hit the uh, uh get off the pad it just Boom, I'd get these explosions. Yeah, I missed a bunch, but uh, we actually caught a couple, and that's what saved us and got us to second place. Um, so yeah, so that's where I fish this. I fish it, you know, anywhere where there's structure. I'm not saying that you can't, you know, get bit when it's kind of open water, but me personally, when I'm fishing the chatterbait, I try to get as close as I can to different structures where they're holding, and then this is just, you know, kind of a reaction bait, and they see it, and they go after it. So yeah, um, I think that's about everything you need to know. You know, I'm rocking a 6.6 medium fast action rod. This is, um, you know, a 6.3 reel. Make sure you have the trigger happy comfort grip. Um, I use floral carbon. Like I said, this is, I believe this is 12, but I also, I also use 15 pound floral carbon, but I use the 12 a lot. Seaguar. And I'll, I'll, I'll take a picture of it here in a second. I got to dig it out. But yeah, chatterbaits, man. Um, I love them. Um, I have a buddy who fishes spinnerbaits a lot. And uh, he has no confidence in chatterbait. And I tell him, wherever you fish a spinnerbait, you can fish a chatterbait. So anyways, I gave him a couple chatterbaits. And uh, it wasn't, I think, two days later, he calls me. And he's like, man, you know what? You're right chatterbaits are awesome and he just gained so much confidence in there because i told him just to fish fish it like a spinnerbait and fish it where you would and when you would a spinnerbait and now he's a firm believer in chatterbait um, i'm not saying that the chatterbait is better than a spinnerbait me personally i have a little bit more confidence on a chatterbait but i also throw the heck out of spinnerbaits so yeah all right guys well there's the quick video about chatterbaits and what I use and where I use it. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you liked the video. Hopefully you learned something. That guy, Skimpy, please subscribe. Okay, so it actually was 15-pound cigar. And I buy it. I buy usually one of these a year and then re-spool all my, all my rods. But yeah. This uh, Seaguar is awesome. And like I said, this is 15 pound. I also used a 12 pound, but what I have on the rod right now is 15 pound.